This video will be a demonstration of the Citrix Personal VDisk feature of Zen Desktop 5.6. My name is Mike Larkin. I'm a principal architect in Citrix's personalization team. Now, in a previous video, I walked you through the general overview of what the Citrix Personal VDisk feature was all about, its general capabilities, and how it worked from a high level perspective. This video is actually going to be a demonstration of the product itself, and you can see what it looks like from both an administrator and an end user perspective. Where I'd like to start is at the hypervisor. And in this environment, what I have here are a few VMs. Uh, the first VM uh, that I've got here is the DVC. And this is just the standard installation of Zen Desktop 5.6 from the ISO image that you download from Citrix.com. I also have a couple of base VM images for various different operating systems for the purposes of this demo. And I also have a catalog and a desktop group consisting of just two machines, just to show you what it looks like. Now, of course, this could be a much larger deployment, but uh, this is a, a fairly low-end server, so I didn't want to overload it. And we'll look at what these uh, VMs, or, uh, how you interact with these VMs shortly. The second thing that I'll show you is the DDC. And the DDC environment is, again, this is a standard installation of Zen Desktop 5.6. What you'll notice here is you've actually got a very familiar interface. The UI hasn't changed really all that much since 5.5, with the exception of a couple of new catalog types. And the first is a pooled with personal VDisk option and the second is a streamed with personal VDisk option. Now pooled with personal VDisk is used for personal VDisk deployments uh, with uh, MCS or machine creation services and streamed with personal VDisk is used for uh, uh, provisioning services or PVS deployments. Uh, personal VDisk will work with either. So I'll walk you through what the wizard looks like and the changes that you'll see there. Again the first most noticeable choice is that you now have these additional catalog type. So if I select pooled with personal VDisk, for example, because I'm using MCS here in this demo, and I'll pick a base VM image here. doesn't really matter which one of these I pick. The first change that you'll see is that you now have an additional two options here available to you in the wizard. The first is the total size of the personal VDisk, and the second is a drive letter that will be exposed to the user uh, of this environment in Windows Explorer and you'll see what that looks like in just a minute. Uh, one thing to note here is you'll see this as this is the total size of the personal VDisk for each user. And really what we're telling MCS here to do is for each VM that it creates in the catalog, so for each of these two or three or four, however many I pick, uh, each one will get a disk assigned to it that's of this size. And by default what we will do in personal VDisk is we will allocate 50% of that size for application installations and we will allocate the other 50% of the size for end user profiles or for example everything that goes into C colon users. Now we do realize that each customer is unique and that 50-50 split may not be appropriate for your environment. So you can actually change that split in the base VM when you install the VDA software and that split could be whatever you like. If you need more space for user profiles you can ask for that and if you'd like more space for applications you can configure that as well. That's also important when you're using a profile management solution and you don't want personal VDisk to be managing the profile for you. You also need to make sure that you select a drive letter that's not going to be in use in your environment, so one of these letters is uh, the one that you would pick for, for your particular deployment. Now after this page in the wizard, there really isn't any substantive changes to the rest of the workflow when you're creating a catalog, so I'm not going to go through the rest of this because it looks identical, so we'll cancel this. Now you might be wondering you know, that 10 gig disk that I asked for, you know, where does, it, where does it get created and how does it get assigned to the VM? And what you, what you can see here is from the host definition perspective, where I'm creating the VMs, I've already selected when I created my host, where I wanted to put the VM storage for the base images and the difference in disks. But there's also an additional storage, uh, storage location defined for the personal VDisks themselves. Now, I only have one storage defined on this hypervisor, so that's why they're the same. But this could easily be two different storage locations. So while it's true that Personal VDisk does add some IOPS to your environment, what you can do with this is you can actually spread those IOPS now out over a couple of different storage locations or storage tiers. And you can always go in and change this later. You can add additional Personal VDisk storage with the option over here on the right. So I'll go back to the machine option here. So let's assume that we've created our catalog and we've created our machines. As you can see now, there's a new pool type that's defined here, a pool with Personal VDisk. And all the normal operations are still available, so I can update this image by making changes to my base VM, which I'll show you uh, in, uh, shortly here. And I can also put this, uh, uh, take the machines, uh, look in the catalog, oops, I don't want to delete it, view. Take a look at the catalog, uh, take a look at the group that's assigned, 
and perform all the standard kind of maintenance operations that you normally would with any other Zen desktop tool. Now, as you can see here, there's already been a user assigned to one of these VMs, and indeed that's me here. So we'll take a look at my VM uh, in just a minute. Uh, but in general, this is the same kind of maintenance that you would normally be doing with, uh, with Zen Desktop. So what we'll do now is we'll switch over to the end user view and take a look at what the end user workflow looks like. Now from an end user perspective, what I'll end up doing is I'll just open up the standard Zen Desktop uh, wizard to log in. And I'll navigate to my DDC, log in, which I've already done here, and I just select the desktop. Uh, group that I have access to. And if I select this uh, environment here, what I've actually got is, oh, I've already got it open. Um, this is my end user desktop. And my end user desktop is going to show me basically the same kind of environment that I would normally be used to when I'm using Zen Desktop. So in the, in the personal VDIS case, what I have access to down here in my start menu from an application point of view is everything that's installed in my base VM. So in this environment here, I've got uh, a, a developer environment. So I've got Visual Studio, I've got SDKs, DDKs, I've got Microsoft Office. Indeed, I have everything that my administrator has provisioned for me in this base VM. Now, this is actually a, a pretty large base VM. It's got uh, close to 40 gigabytes of software installed into it. And as you can see here, though, from an end user's point of view, really all you have is half of that size that I was describing before. So this was a personal vDisk environment that had 10 gigabytes of storage space defined right here, but only half of it, or 4.99, is available for, uh, for application installations. The rest, which is out here, this 4.8, is the space that's been reserved for the profile, or essentially, again, everything that's under C colon users. So this would be my profile here, and if configured, any other users that had access to this VM. But from an end user's point of view, again, all you have is this space that's available here but you still have access to everything from the base VM. So if I were to take a look at uh, an application installation, we could navigate out here and find an application that we wanted to install. Uh, let's try iTunes. Be a good example. So if I'm an end user and I've been given the authority to install additional applications, I can of course install applications here uh, just like I normally would. There's really nothing extra required. I don't have to sequence the application or profile the application. I just simply download the installer and then install it. Now while this is actually installing, I've actually pre-downloaded another application we can look at while we're waiting for this. I've got uh, the, the Pigeon instant message client here as well. Now Pigeon is a pretty simple application and there are some other application virtualization solutions out there that can handle it. But it is pretty quick and it'll show you kind of the overview and the example of what I've been referring to. So again, an end user's point of view, I'm simply installing applications, I am administering my own machine, I'm doing whatever I normally would do in a very personalized way. Now this can also apply to applications that are being provisioned to my virtual machine through a system, uh, through system center, through SCCM, or through any other number of application provisioning uh, softwares that are out there. So the, the moral of the story is anything that you're currently using to deploy software to VMs, you can continue to use in a personal VDisk environment. Now as these things are being downloaded and installed, really what's actually happening here is in my computer view, I'm actually using up some of this space. If you remember, it was 4.11 before, and now it's 4.06. So I've actually got my Pigeon Instant Message software installed now. So as an end user, I'm happy. I'm able to personalize my environment. I don't actually need to run this here. This is just what the IAM client looks like when you boot it. And as I continue to download things, what you'll see is some space get, is getting consumed in my profile as this software here is being downloaded because it's going into C colon users. And applications that, are, that I'm installing are going here into the C drive. So we'll wait for iTunes to finish here and then go ahead and launch that. All right, so iTunes is ready to go. So we'll let this installation proceed. It's going to uh, keep going for a while here. Uh, I think the iTunes usually takes a few minutes to install. And what we'll do is while we're waiting, we'll switch back over here, and I can take you through what the administration view looks like from the DDC point of view. And what you've got here in Desktop Director is you've got some new options available. I'll go back to the home screen here. 
So from a help desk perspective, if an end user calls up and says that their personal VDisk disk environment is misbehaving or they have some questions, or you just want to see the general health of the environment, you can drill down to the machine that the end user is referring to. And you'll see there are some additional capabilities here. Specifically down here in the corner of the machine view, you've got a personal VDisk summary that, re that reflects the space used in both of those sections that I just described. So you've got both the, uh, the space uh, 5 gigabytes for the application area and 5 gigabytes for the profile area, and you can see which percentage is used. And you've also got up here a button that says Reset Personal VDIS. Now this is a very useful feature, and this is actually the reason why we, why we took the step of splitting out the profile from the applications. And that's because as a help desk administrator, what you can do now is you can reset the application area of the personal VDisk without affecting the data. So as the end user calls up and they say, hey, I've installed an application that I don't think is working right, or you know, something's wrong with my VM, I, I messed it up somehow, but you don't want to worry about having, you know, uh, having their data get lost. What you can do is you can reset it here. Now, when you, when you select the reset button and click it here, what will end up happening is the desktop director will go out to the VM that you've selected and instruct the personal VDIS uh, feature to wipe out the application area and revert it to factory default, which is by default, you know, no applications installed by the end user. They'll still have access to the applications installed in the base environment, but they won't have any of their applications installed anymore. So again, this is, uh, this is a factory reset operation. It doesn't snapshot back to the last known good. It snapshots all the way back to the beginning. Now, I'm not actually going to do that here, but that's, that's what you'd end up, uh, that's what you'd end up doing. And it does reboot the user's uh, VM, and it will tell you the user will be logged off. So if a user would end up calling you on the help desk as a, as a desktop directory user saying, hey, you know, I'm running out of space. Can you help me? Because you know, I'm seeing a, a, a low disk space warning in Windows from a, uh, from a, from a, a troubleshooting perspective, what you can do is you can actually go to the hypervisor console and take a look at the user's machine and you can increase the size here. As I um, referred to earlier, this is the size that's been assigned by, uh, by the, uh, the machine creation services and you can just simply change the size of it here from the properties tab. Now some, as I mentioned, some hypervisors will let you change this and some won't uh, at, if the VM is running, so you need to ask the user to power down. Once you've increased the size, the personal VDIS software will detect the size change and on the next restart of the machine it will actually allocate that 50-50 split again or whatever split you've selected and provision that out to the user uh, immediately for, for immediate use. We'll take a look at a base VM. And in a base VM, this is what you'll normally see. And this base VM is the base VM that I was uh, just showing my pool VM was uh, instantiated from except uh, with the exception this is 32-bit, the other one was 64-bit, but other than that they're identical. And as you can see here, I'm, I've installed as an administrator all the applications that I want my end users to have access to. But you'll notice there's no P drive here. There's no personal VDisk disk attached to the base VM. Those disks get assigned and created as soon as the, the catalog gets created. So in the base VM mode you don't have that capability or you don't have the personal VDisk present. But what you do have is an extra option in your start menu called Update Personal VDisk, and that is not visible in the End User Pool VM instance. That is only visible in, uh, uh, in the base VM mode. Now when you select this, what ends up happening is we will, we will perform what we call an inventory operation, and that inventory is exactly what it sounds like. It just takes a survey and uh, records metadata about the software that you have installed in this base VM, and that's used to populate an initial empty personal VDisk environment that gets uh, saved with this base VM in case you add new machines to the pool. Uh, if you forget to do this, that's okay. What will end up happening as soon as you try to log off the machine, you'll get reminded. You'll get reminded to shut down uh, personal VDisk and take the inventory. So here what you're seeing is a reminder message uh, that says, hey, you know, if you're going to be creating a new catalog or a new snapshot, out of the space VM, you need to take the inventory op you need to perform the inventory operation first. Now you can always just force the shutdown and ignore it, but if you cancel out of this, what you'll see is there's a reminder message sitting behind here that says, you know, you need to make sure that you do this inventory. You can also opt out of this message, and in which case uh, you have to remember to uh, invoke the inventory operation from the start menu. So let's uh, take a look real quick and switch back to our uh, our VM environment. Take a look at what's going on here. So as you can see, our installation is finished of iTunes, so as an end user now I've installed two different applications. I've installed iTunes and I've also installed uh, the Pigeon Instant Messenger application. 
So these applications would be installed into my uh, would be installed into my personal VDisk. Mentioned that in my quick time install. And you can see iTunes consumes some space plus the personal uh, plus the pigeon is the message client installed some uh, some stuff as well in here. So now I'm down to 3.6 gigabytes as an end user. So as an end user, I've got the applications that I install that I wanted installed, and I've got my uh, uh, my my changes will be persisted across uh, image updates. So as as an end as an administrator, once I roll out an update to catalog machines in this catalog, when I roll out this update this uh, update machine operation. Uh, personal VDisk will ensure that the changes that have been made in my environment are applied to the new base VM as well. So essentially we compute a difference and we apply the changes that are required to keep the, the environment up to date. Now there's always the possibility that in, a, if that in a situation like this where you're doing an update between two different versions of a base VM plus end user changes that you might end up with a conflict. And you know how do we handle that? Uh, th that's done in a rules configuration file that you can edit from the base VM and you can actually change the behavior of how uh, conflicts are resolved. If you don't do anything and just accept the, the behavior of the, the software the way it is, the administrator changes will always beat or win out over the user changes. And that's generally what most IT administrators want. Uh, the downside to that is that if you had a conflicting piece of software, uh, most specifically we see this with version conflicts, uh, the end user might have to update their application again. Uh, but that's uh, by default that's the behavior and again if, if you don't like that you can change that behavior and you can say that in a particular file or folder location uh, that an end user's changes will beat an administrator's changes. So we've taken a whirlwind tour through the product. We've looked at um, the administrative perspective from the desktop director environment. We've also taken a look at the reset operation here. Taken a look at what you can see from the desktop director environment. We walked through the creation of catalogs and the definition of hosts and storage locations and we've also looked at from the end user perspective what personal VDS looks like from an end user's point of view. So I hope the video has been informative and be on the lookout for some more technical videos that we'll be putting up in the, in the days and weeks to come. Thanks a lot.